Hey guys, welcome back to Do It Live, and it's day two of Ryzen's release, and I didn't even get to rise from my grave. I just rose from my slumber to find out that you still can't get motherboards, and I can't even use the Ryzen 7 jet. So I'm trying to chronicle uh, going through the launch of Ryzen with you guys, and I didn't want to make a video every day, but I wanted to make one every week or every two weeks uh, to sort of showcase the struggles of early adoption with the Ryzen platform and any problems you might face and maybe we can figure out and beat them together. However, I can't even get my hands on a system to start that off with you guys. But as you guys saw in the last video, I have something in the works. I'm going to be comparing it to a 6700K Skylake system that uh, will show you the difference in the gaming performance, which there will be some, um, but also just in terms of full-on usability uh, and stability alongside that. Of course, I also want to compare it to my 4570 setup here, as this is the best, like I mentioned, path of upgrade that you should be taking if you're looking to get to the Ryzen platform. If you have a four-core processor, just stick with it. Um, Sorry, if you have a 6700K comparable, just stick with it. Don't get Ryzen right now. Uh, but just thank AMD for the fact that they're making it competitive again. So I want to show you that going from a 6700K may not be worth it, but going from something like a 4570, a uh, 6600K, even though that's really new and you should be good, or anything worse than those two is where you should come from for a Ryzen system. Also, coming from a laptop, we may take a look at that. We may compare it a little bit from that, uh, like the 6700HQ or the 7700HQ, which I have in my Alienware 13. Review is in the corner up there. What it's like to go from something like that and then have a Ryzen system as your main system so that you have some performance on the go but when you're at home you have that great great 8 core multi threaded um, performance that you want so what's been happening today is I've been following up on the pre-order that I had uh, where I pre-ordered the 1700X to make sure that I got it one on launch I, at least I thought it would um, and two to get it at a cheaper price uh, the store called Shop RDC in Canada actually had the pre-orders for $50 less and it turns out, I called them this morning, that they won't be shipping them out for another week or two. There's a point in pre-ordering then you don't get them at launch? What kind of computer store are you? It's a little bit disappointing that these stores aren't getting them at launch and not getting motherboards at launch as you want to push the sale of these products. People are going to come launch day why would they buy a CPU without the main component you need to take advantage of the CPU, which is the motherboard, so crazy. But another thing that happened was I ordered an AM4 bracket from Corsair for their Hydro All-in-One water cooling series uh, coolers because the current ones don't have any brackets that are guaranteed to work for AM4 um, unless you have like the H68 H100i, those have compatible brackets, uh, but something like the H75, which I'm picking up from a buddy, um, does not have the compatible mounting bracket, and they sell it online for $5 US and shipping, but there's a coupon code which I'll link in the description below for you to get that bracket for free and free shipping so that when your Ryzen comes in, whenever it does, you can use it with that new uh, socket size. So I thought that was really nice. It's great that Corsair is doing that. Noctu is doing that. I'll put a link in the description below just to remind me and uh, we can help get you guys some of those uh, brackets for you to use on your new chipset. So another thing that happened was um, motherboards still not available anywhere. I think Vancouver has a couple. Newegg has some available for Canada but they're shipped from the US I'm assuming that this isn't a problem in the US because everyone's totally fine. No one's talking about this. Toronto is one of the major hubs in Canada and the fact that nowhere in Toronto 
past one, you have no way of getting a motherboard in Toronto, is quite ridiculous when we have about 6 million or more people. And I'm sure even if 1% of those people were PC people, you should have some ready to go. I don't, I just find it crazy that we don't have any. I know Vancouver probably has a couple, not like just a couple motherboards, but a few sets of motherboards out there as some stores are saying that they're available online. But you have to wait for them to ship, which is two to seven days. And um, that'll be next week and they're probably coming next week anyways. It's pretty crazy. So I'm stuck here. I'm pretty much just sitting on my heels waiting for that stuff to get started. So I decided I would build the 6700K build for you guys to take advantage of and to get ready at least when Ryzen comes out for us or Motherboards comes out for us that we can do some comparison and get started with the challenge. So what I want to do for the challenge is use a pure AMD system for 6 to 12 months and see the growing pains and see if maybe performance gets better as time goes on. I'll do like a benchmark every two weeks, uh, new BIOS updates, I'll get that out and stuff like that. Uh, so I want to go with a 1700X, um, either a B350 or an X370 uh, board, but I am i don't know if I'll do NVIDIA SLI. It can support Crossfire and I want to do a pure AMD build anyways, so it might be better just for the price to performance delta to stick with a B350 board and uh, save a few bucks there. but. We'll see, let me know if you'd rather me go with a X370 when it comes out. I can spring like maybe 70 bucks more for the better chipset and future proofing, whatever, you know. Nvidia has a lot of power right now. Uh, obviously SSD, hard drive for storage. Uh, I'm gonna go with an air cooler, but I might go with my Corsair Hydro. We'll see about that. I'm gonna go with DDR4, 3000 megahertz. RAM, gotta do it up. I'm gonna try to get maybe around 600, 700 watt power supply and a nice side uh, window case so you guys can take a look and we can both admire the beautiful Ryzen setup. But for the 6700K, um, you guys saw a few of the parts. The parts will come on screen as well as I talk about them. But we have the 6700K, an amazing desktop processor, four cores, eight threads, you know, the whole shebang. Then we have an MSI Z170 SLI Plus, that's good enough for the Skylake, that'll hit our um, overclocking if we need to, SLI support is right in the name. We have that too, I'm going to have an SSD running for that as well, gotta remove any of the hard drive bottlenecks which is pretty huge. Uh, I have 8 gigs of, no no, I'll have 16 gigs of DDR4 3000MHz RAM there, um, I have a 550 550 or 650 watt Corsair power supply. Nothing fancy. You don't need any more than 500 to 600 watts anyways anymore. Um, and then we have the Noctua cooler, which is a huge hefty air cooler, but it works really well. I love the mounting system on it because I hate any of those push pins that you gotta do. And then when you try to pull it out, you break it, they bend, they don't work as well. And you gotta make sure your CPU is solid and attached really well. Of course, I'm gonna do a build log for this as well. I'm not sure if I'll do it in a different video or if I'll just do it in this one as we are preparing for that. So, I'll have two really, really good systems running side by side. I'll have this one as well. I wanna give you guys the best um, case scenario, try to give you good ideas of how to look at Ryzen right now, um, as a lot of people are a little bit disappointed with what they hear. So, if you enjoyed this video, as soon as Ryzen comes out, we'll start working on that system. I'll keep you updated as soon as I get more, or at least I get the parts in so I can do a build log for you guys. But, hit that like, stay subscribed, you'll get updates on the new and upcoming videos that I'll be making in the meantime while we wait for Ryzen. And um, I hope you guys continue to do a lot.